Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ian and you are watching The Weekend Painter. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. In this video, slightly different to the ones I've done in the past, I'm going to be taking you through this old How to Make War Games Terrain Book by Games Workshop. So if, like me, you guys got into the hobby in the 90s, you'd have spent a lot of time building terrain. Because unlike today, where you can walk into Games Workshop or any other online retailers and you can buy lots of terrain for your wargaming boards, back in the 90s, you couldn't. We had to make it. We had to be resourceful. So... Games Workshop did books like this, How to Make War Games Terrain, basically out of scrap. All this is just polystyrene, these are all toys, and we would get creative back then with sand, PVA glue, and polystyrene. Full of artwork, classic artwork. This stuff, we used to see it in every battle report in the White Dwarf, it would be in every catalogue you, you could find. Showing you how to make these. Trees about the only thing you could buy from Games Workshop at the time. They used to sell these trees. Everything else, like I say, was just made up of other stuff. This river, this is an old classic river. This is in so many pictures. And I've actually got this river. Here are sections of this river. This came from Games Workshop head office. Uh, probably around 2000. I've got plans to do this up and fix it up and make it look like it does in this. But yeah, back in 2000, the Games Workshop head office in Nottingham used to be, well, back in the 90s, it used to be like a museum. And in the year 2000, they had a, a renovated it all and it turned it into the big hall that they've got there now. If you've been up to Nottingham, you'll have seen the huge gaming hall. And when they did that, they decided that they were going to get rid of the scenery. So they they basically put it in a skip. And 2000 was the year that I started working for the company, for Games Workshop. And my old boss at the time, he went up to, to Nottingham for a meeting and looked in one of the skips and found loads of this old scenery. And the Imperial Fist Army that was on the diorama of the Battle for the Emperor's Palace. Uh, some cathedrals and everything. So he took it out the bin and he brought it to the store and it was in the Portsmouth store for the next 10 years. And we used to play games in it. And then it got to the point where it was old and it was tired and it got to the point where we were going to recycle it, but we couldn't, we couldn't throw it out. So it ended up being in a basement. And it's been in that basement for some years. Every now and again we get out and play with it. But... It's been in the basement for a long time and I've got plans to fix it up back to its former glory. But that's a different video. In this video, we're going to be looking at these old books. So, Games Workshop at the time would give us tons of ideas of how to make scenery. And you could go from real basic to real advanced stuff like this. This is basic. This is a welcome map that you could go and buy in any store. Houses made out of cardboard. Tubes, Pringles tubes, cocktail sticks, stuck into polystyrene balls. There's the bridge again. See, it was literally in everything. So this takes you through how to design your battlefield. There it is again with the old orc. Look at that. The old orc battle wagon and the original Razorback. These trees were made actually out of wire wrapped around wrapped together and then coated in PVA glue and tissue paper. Old style brushes, look at them. Old style. Some would say better than the current Games Workshop brushes, but each to their own. So we'll take you through what materials you needed. Cereal boxes, glue, cardboard, polystyrene, 
Never throw anything out in the 80s. Uh, sorry, in the 90s as a kid. There you go. Look at that. Some Pringles tubes would make necromander scenery and some plastic straws before Games Workshop sold the current rather expensive scenery you could make it out of scrap look at the old classic, look at that how many times have I said classic in this video so far? old paint sets twigs, stones Pebbles. I still do this now. I still collect pebbles and bits of slate and I bring it home and I use it to build various bases or bits of scenery. That's from an old diorama. I think it had wood elves in it. And this is what Games Workshop used to be like. Look at that. Very similar. It looks like a, a project somebody does in their in their spare room, doesn't it? Not a multi-million pound global corporation. This is where GW started. So here we go. Making bases. A few layers of cardboard and then some polyfiller. That's how you make creators. Hills, we all used to have these sloped hills because back in the day, your Warhammer models used to stand on each individual layer of a hill. So if you're on the first level, you could see over things on the ground. If you're on the second level, you could see over things that were on the first level and see over things that were on the ground. So for the game mechanic, you needed a very stepped system to make it clear who could see over whom. This cannon, for instance, has got clear line of sight over everything but if it was on the same level as these troops in front of it or these troops in front of it it wouldn't have a clear line of sight so back then we used to make hills with steps different rule systems so you need a different scenery wow look at that look how old the layman russ is woods Various different ways. These used to be sponges stuck on the top of twisted wire. And here is the river itself. So here's the step by step guide of how to make this river. Here it is being made. Look, it's made out of cardboard. Cardboard, sand, and PVA glue. That's the piece that I'm going to work on. That there is this piece here. So, the bridge, or the pontoon, you've got the, this is still here, see the, it's kind of lost its spring, it's lost a few stones, and it's looking a bit aged. So I'll reflock it, I'll make it look nice. That's a different video, like I say. Marshes, done the same way. Cardboard, sand, gloss varnish, easy. So then, scenery does not have to be expensive, guys. It can be really simple. There you go. Dimensions for a house. Cut that out from cardboard. Stick it together. Add some details. These wooden bits here, does it show you on the next page? It might do. Doors, ruined temples. Now, so these wooden bits here on the side, plain old cardboard, are just these lollipop sticks. Cut them down to size, glue them on, paint them a different colour, and you get all this tech all this texture. And this look. Doors again, same. A few of these, what was this? Does about a pound. Lay them out. Two strips across the other way. Simple doors. Really easy. Ruined temples, cardboard. 
Movement trays, look, before GW made movement trays, they showed you how to make your own using cardboard. Fences, hedges, here we go, hedges done out of scouring pads and sort of things that you used to do the dishes with. Fencing again, made out of things like matchsticks and lollipop sticks with a bit of scouring pad and then you distress it, chop it up a little bit and you're gonna you get bushes. Now the same guy who kept the river in his basement for years also has this. So I'm gonna get that off him and I'm gonna do a video on building that. These are a classic. I know lots of people that made these. Pringles tube chopped in half. There you go, here's the trees. So making a wire tree. Grab a bunch of wires, twist them together, soak bandage or tissue paper and PVA glue and water, wrap it round, wait till it dries, paint it. Paint it brown. Real easy. Leaves are made out of paper. These are a ball of polystyrene, painted green, and then cocktail sticks stabbed into it. Simple as that. As you can see these, old style, these are all wire as well. And these are brushes. So you get an old brush that you'd use to sweep, sweep the yard, sweep the garden or anything like that. And you would just add all the bristles onto the end. There you go, tubes chopped in half, make some classic bunkers. Orc buildings were always really simple because they were nice and square and they were very simply made. So you could just, you could knock them out of any, any old bit of cardboard you had left around. Fencing, we used to make these out of, I used to get them from a, a car body repair shop. You'd, you'd buy these sheets of thin, mesh exactly exactly this and chop it into size cocktail sticks or lollipop sticks or anything like that to use as the supports and then you cut into them with scissors and that's it easily done used to play a lot of necromunda with fences these are a classic look at that this same model used to turn up Again, I've said classic, brilliant. These are your models you used to turn up when you bought a Dreadnought in the past. It would come in a little box, and it would, or a Necromunda gang, or a unit of models. And they would come in these polystyrene trays. You would get two of these, two big sections, and four small sections. Okay? Never throw these away. Turn them into your scenery. So again, you'd mix PVA glue and sand together. You'd pull the polystyrene apart. Put it onto a base made out of card. Cover it in PVA glue and sand to seal all the polystyrene in. And that would give it like a thin, like a skin on top of it, which would make it very tough. And then you would dry brush it up. And that was it. For every purchase you made, you got a free building with old Games Workshop scenery. That's one of the old Necromunda doors. Just stuck into the polystyrene. But look at that. Real simple. Tubes, straws, just adding texture and detail with card onto a slab of polystyrene. You used to buy these, you used to get this stuff, it's insulation, you used to get it in builders merchants. And you could get it about an inch thick or you could get it two inches thick and you would use a hot wire cutter to ch chop it into shape. Then you would have to cover it in PVA, anything you did with polystyrene, you'd have to cover it in PVA glue, watered down. Once that PV is on there, it's, it lasts for years. Makes it really tough and durable.
There you go. List of the tools that you would need. Hot glue guns. Polystyrene cutters. Look at the stuff you could come up with. Brilliant. This, I believe, was made out of uh, an old toy. I think it's um, from Thunderbirds, if I remember rightly. A smashed up old toy. Make a crash spaceship. And of course, you could make huge gaming boards as long as the rivers, as long as the entry and the exit point on the rivers or the roads were all along the middle of the board. Okay, it didn't matter how many you made, oh, if that makes sense. It didn't have to go together in a certain way because the entry and the exit point being in the center of the board means you can flip it around anyway in any other piece of riverboard or road would always match so you'd always get a road or a river that made sense when you had a bit of river that was going off to the top it could then only join onto the corresponding um next piece but if you did them in the middle it was a little trick you could put them together any way you wanted hey, when was this 1996 so there you go I'm going to be grabbing a lot of second edition scenery and I'm going to be fixing up this river and I'm going to maybe make a few of these if that's the kind of thing you guys would be interested in let me know if not let me know and then I won't that's absolutely fine um, but I hope you enjoyed having a little look at some old books. If you can manage to get a hold of this on eBay or anywhere you can find it, then I suggest picking it up. It is absolutely awesome. Um, you know, and it may end up saving you a lot of money in learning how to turn recycling into scenery for your games. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. I've waffled on for long enough now. It's about 17 minutes. So I'm going to go. I will see you on the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.